Um, well, I think it depends on if it was like up pressure or down pressure, because yesterday was a bit of everything. So um, when it was windier, uh, it's really just about getting a balance of the right controls on um, and hiking really hard. And so we were trying to pretty much go <clears throat> Max Vang, a little bit of Cunningham, and dropping the Draveler all the way down to the bottom, mm -hmm. and then just being really, really um, active on the main sheet. Yep. So that you're kind of just bang sheeting. Yep. And we're trying to get the boat moving around 6263 through the water most of the time. Um, so we had a uh, Velocitech on the boat. So we're always sort of aiming for 62 as a good um, upwind boat speed. Where'd you get that number? Just from experimentation, or did somebody tell you what that's a good well, number? Well, they told us to aim for six knots. <laughs> and so we tried to try to figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> but what we've, what we've noticed, um, the first day was quite windy. Mm -hmm. And one thing we noticed is most of the boats sail higher and a little slower. Um, and we had a, quite a bit of success by keeping the bow down, keeping the boat rolling. Uh -huh. um, and as long as you're in a good enough lane to do that, I think the upwind BMG is better. Uh -huh. And then you're sort of getting to the new ship faster most of the time. Right. Um, and it gives you, I think it's just a good mode to have on the race course. Mm -hmm. And it's really easy to gauge because you have that number. Um, that you're sort of aiming for. So that's a really interesting tip for a lot of sailors is to get that number and and try to play until you get that, right? Yeah. Because some people just sail and they don't they don't know whether they're doing well or not. You know, if they're just practicing, for instance. Well, yeah. I think one thing though is that a lot of sailors tend to be to look at it too much. I would say. Yeah. It's like you get so focused on that that you forget to like look up and right. check out the race course and right. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, for us, um, we tried to sail the boat very much as a partnership. Yeah. And so Annie's kind of, uh, we're both heads out of the boat, but Annie's just sort of focusing on driving. And I'm giving her feedback about if we need to go a little bow down, a little faster mode. Mm -hmm. For the most part, we're in the groove. And so I, I keep one eye on it, but try not to say too much mm -hmm. and only really bring it up when the boat seems like it's starting to get stalled. And mm -hmm. we might be looking around a lot and not really as focused on keeping the boat going fast mm -hmm. um, and then when that happens it's a good refresher to sort of check back in and get the boat rolling again yeah sure thursday um it was it, obviously your lake sailing so it's a bit shiftier um but thursday was a bit more oscillating pressure and you could actually play the middle quite a bit more um you didn't getting across the middle wasn't as difficult as it was yesterday yesterday was kind of pick a side, play your side, and um, there was very long oscillations on lifts on port, no sorry, lifts on starboard lasted longer than lifts on port, mm -hmm. so it was really important to cross the middle when you could um, mm -hmm. on those port shifts that you got, mm -hmm. but yeah, we, we struggled quite a bit with those actually. Yeah, for sure. It was difficult because I, I was... Um, also, with all the chop and everything, it was hard to be head down in the boat. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, mm -hmm. yesterday it was, I think, you know, uh, on the first race we had a really good start and we were doing really well at the first speed and we ended up rounding in fifth or so. And then, where then from there on, where we really struggled was just uh, um, we were having a tough time holding lanes. Mm. And so there was like three critical times when. Um, you're on the lift, you're going to the side you want to go to, and we just couldn't hang in a lane. Because you didn't have the speed? or uh, the... Yeah, I, well, once it was, we hit a bad set of waves. Mm -hmm. um, once there we were, there was a boat above us who was in head, ahead of us going low, a boat below us who was ahead of us going high. Ooh. And, and then the sandwiched out. Then you got sandwiched. And mm -hmm. then the third time, uh, our bang broke. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, broke the shackle in half. Yeah. Ooh pulling a little too hard or something. <laughs> um, so that one really hurt because it was off the line in the second race. Mm -hmm. And we were nice lane, headed out to the side we wanted to on the lift, bang breaks, lose mm -hmm. the lane, and then have to sit in crap. Because you don't want to tack off the lift attack. Had right. to sort of sit in crap for a while. Right. So each and each scenario was a little different, but those like recognizing, I guess, when you're in those spots, how important it is to hang in those lanes yeah. is really critical and that's like I think where 
years of experience pays off when you can sail the boat without having to look around or know what to do when a bad set of waves comes or stuff like that. I think we're, we could definitely make improvement on mm -hmm. um, because mm -hmm. we, we have some good gears obviously, but we don't have it all yeah. for sure. Yeah. And I think, you know, the best sailors here, you see it, they, they've been sailing these boats a lot and they kind of know how to get the boat powered back up and uh, how to avoid those bigger sets of waves or maybe not put themselves in lanes they can't live in. Yeah. Whereas I think we're used to, you know, sailing the boats that we sail at a pretty high level and used to being able to hang in lanes that we we can't hang in, in these boats. Yeah. yeah. Um, so interesting. It's, uh, yeah, no, it, it's interesting. And it's also different because there's so much bad air in these boats. The sails are like big triangles. So they're so low to the ground. They're so wide. Mm -hmm. There's so many boats. Mm -hmm. Bad air just kills you. Yeah. Whereas in other fleets, when you have a really high aspect ratio main, um, and there's not as much sail area down low, right? You aren't as disadvantaged by yeah. wind shadows. Interesting. And this you really are. The one difference I do see is starting line and um, aggressiveness of boat handling on starting line. This, like, the tactical level of this fleet is so high. Um, like very impressive it's so fun it's it's great to hop in but yeah the um starting line tactics are kind of set up early and sit which is not like the other high level racing that i've been a part of yeah. it's like a lot more maneuvering a lot more jockeying for so do you think in the scows that scow enterprising scow sailors could start adopting that and do well yeah i mean we we don't know the boats well enough um, uh -huh. to experiment with that right now. We're just trying to like, you know, make sure we don't get stuck in irons on the line. Right. But it is, it is pretty funny that, uh, I don't know, do you find that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's hard with these uh, metal center boards to get flow. Yeah. So, yeah. And so I think the, that's sort of why is because the penalty for losing flow is so high yeah. that it's hard to sort of maneuver the boat on the line. Mm -hmm. um, but we did, I mean, we only trained one day before this, and we spent 60% of our time getting a feel for the foils and doing accelerations and stuff. Oh. And I think our starts here have been really good. Yeah. Um, Which is new for me. <laughs> yeah, it's been good. So that's, uh, I think there's definitely, it's such a critical point in the race in this fleet. So it's definitely uh, a place where maybe a little bit more time could be spent by some of the sailors. Because, like, at the Olympic level, you spend a lot of time practicing starts, and everyone's really, really, really good, yeah. really aggressive. Yeah. yeah. But people aren't aggressive in that they're over all the time. They're just aggressive in defending their hole on the line right. and right. positioning their boat and sticking in one spot. Right. Right. Um, and so, it's. It,